Hey gang, welcome back to another Electronics and More Cool Gadget video. Today I'd like to show you a one-of-a-kind, high-power output, portable power station. Based on the research I've done, no other portable power stations sold online come close to the power output of this unit. As you can see, this EB150 power station made by Max Oak is very nicely designed, uses ABS and polycarbonate plastics, as well as an aluminum alloy which helps the unit to dissipate heat. This portable power station has a 1000 watt continuous rating at 120 volts AC and it can handle surges up to 1200 watts. Has multiple USB ports, each one is rated up to 3 amps for charging all your USB devices, as well as a 12 volt 9 amp accessory socket. This power station, unlike many others, has a pure sine wave output which is exactly what you want if you're going to be using this power station with sensitive electronics. Many other power stations use modified sine wave output. Because this is a high-end product, the unit has a MCU, or microcomputer unit, which monitors all power outputs and charging inputs. The unit is silent unless enough power is drawn from the unit or when high levels of current are used to charge the unit, in that case, an internal cooling fan becomes activated. This power station uses high energy LG automotive grade lithium ion batteries, 4S3P, and later in the video, we're going to take a look inside. The unit weighs around 38 pounds or 17 and a quarter kilograms. The width is six and a half inches wide or 16.5 centimeters. The length is 14 and a half inches or 37 centimeters and from here to the bottom is 12 and a half inches tall or 32 centimeters. This very comfortable handle adds an additional two inches to the height of the unit or five centimeters. Okay to power up the unit you push and hold the power button for a second or two. That's the state of charge for the battery. The top wattage is your input wattage when you go to charge the unit. The middle one says DC, that's going to be your DC wattage. Any of the devices right here being used, you're going to see that wattage show up right there. Over here is your AC wattage. When you turn it on, you would just push and hold, and you can see it says AC on. And the same for DC, DC on. So you're going to see your AC receptacle wattage on the back of the unit show up right here. You can see the four USB ports, three amps max each, and over here is your PD port or power delivery, and that's good up to 45 watts. If the unit's turned on but no power is being used, after a minute or two, it will automatically turn off. While power is being used, the backlight on this display will turn off, if you'd like to turn it on to see what the wattage is, just push it once quickly and the screen will come back on. Now over here, this is where you're going to charge the unit, 16 to 60 volts, 10 amps. The input wattage is right around 500 watts. You don't want to exceed that and you can see this turned off. You have to push it and hold it again to turn it back on. There are multiple ways you can charge this unit. Included with the unit is this 42 volt. 4 amp switch mode power supply and this end would plug right in and the other end would go into your AC receptacle. You can also use the included cable for a solar panel. This would connect up to your solar panel and you would plug it in the same way. You can use two 80 or 100 watt solar panels and you want to connect the two panels in series just like you see right here. So if you get two panels, 80s or 100 watt panels, you're going to have an output voltage which is well above the 16 and that's going to ensure efficient charging of the unit at a fairly quick rate. You can also modify this cable to use it for a crank generator like I'm going to show you in this video. I'm going to be using my bicycle generator to charge this unit or you can use this with the wind generator. Keep in mind the MCU inside this unit controls all the charging. You don't need an external charge controller. Just make sure your solar panels or crank generator have a built-in blocking diode 
and then you're going to input the power into the unit. Using the included charger, it does take 10 to 12 hours to fully charge this unit because of the very high battery capacity. The fan at the back of the unit sucks air in through the front and blows it out the back. There is one other way you can charge this that I forgot to mention, and that's using your vehicle. What you would have to do is purchase a DC to DC step-up converter, one rated 10 to 15 amps like you see right over here. And then you can connect it up to this cable and take the other end and plug it into a 20 amp accessory socket in your vehicle. This unit will not charge using your battery even with the alternator running because the voltage needs to be 16 volts or higher. So you're going to adjust that DC to DC converter to a level around 20 to 24 volts. Then you'll have no problem at all charging this unit. If there's any problem with this unit, charging, discharging, temperature, or anything like that, the MCU is going to display a trouble code on the screen, making it very easy for you to identify what's wrong. And you can see right here is a listing, E1 to E7, and then on this side, E8 to E23. It'll tell you exactly what the problem is and what to do. If you have any problems with this power station, it does include a one-year warranty. Now before demonstrating how amazingly powerful this unit is, and then hooking it up to my bicycle generator to charge it, first let's open this up and take a look inside. Okay, and you can see the control board over here on the left. At the bottom is your battery bank. Took the screw out already. Goes along the entire bottom. Double conductors share the current. And let's take a closer look inside here now because on the right side is the inverter board and another board on top is where all the wires from the charging circuit go. On the inverter board right over here there's a bunch of MOSFETs or transistors lined up, bolted into this heatsink. You have this extra cooling fan for the heatsink. Right here along the bottom, you can see there's another semiconductor. And there's actually a whole bunch of them bolted in between the circuit board and this thick piece of metal. The screws over here go through into that metal to dissipate heat. And then this thick piece of metal is connected to the aluminum body which further dissipates the heat. Right here is a look at the board on the left side. Okay, let me open the other end. Here's a look at the opposite end on the top left. You can see there's more components sandwiched together against the aluminum. And the battery goes clear across the bottom to the opposite side. And over here is the inside of the back cover, the cooling fan, and the AC receptacles. Okay, the power supply is connected up to the refrigerator. You can see the light is off. I'm now going to turn this on. And you're going to see the current level right over here. Here we go. There you go. It went up to 900 and something watts. And now it leveled off at 160. At this level of current, it would run this refrigerator for quite a while. I'm going to be using the portable power supply to power up this 50 inch TV, the Nintendo Switch, the Kodi box, and at the same time, I'm going to charge a MacBook, a Surface Book 2, two smartphones, then I'm going to take the 75 watt spotlight right here and power it up as well. Here we go. Power first. DC. Hear the fan come on, the smartphones are on. Now AC. Okay, and as you can see, Cody's on, 
Nintendo's charging. And TV is working fine. Right now, the DC current output is 16 watts for the two phones. And while the TV is on, let me turn on the 75 watt spotlight. So we have the powerful light going and everything charging as well as the TV. Okay, let's go outside and I'll give you a few more demonstrations. Alright, I have my bicycle generator set to 48 volts. You're going to see it displayed at the rear of the bicycle. And I have it set for a maximum of 3 amps. So that should put out right around 125 or 130 watts on the portable power unit. If you have not seen my bicycle generator video, how I made this and how it powers 120 volt tools directly off the bicycle, then be sure to click on the end card after watching the video. Here we go. And that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate thumbs up, share, and look over my extensive video playlist for other videos of interest to you. Thank you very much for watching.